The stupid, pathetic god kills Keanu Takumi by mistake, and now there is no way for him to get his previous life back. So to make up for this mistake in Keanu's next life, the god blesses him with amazing cheat powers. However, while sending Keanu to another world, the god makes another mistake and transfers him into a dangerous forest where after fighting some really mean-looking red wolves, he finds a pair of scared little children and decides to take care of them. God Sil put a bunch of different foods in his inventory which allows him to feed the kids well. Eating such tasty stuff, even the kids get really happy. However then, Keanu Takumi notices how the clothes of these kids are all torn up. So he uses his cheat skills to give them some nice clothes to wear as well. But even after all this, the kids are not even talking to him. On checking their stats, he finds that they are five years old but without any name. So he calls one of them Alan and the other one Elena. Then the kids start following Takumi wherever he goes. But handling kids is not easy as they have a tendency to start running randomly straight into dangerous monsters. Takumi cannot use magic to protect them as it could also hit the kids. But then we see the kids taking down the monsters easily. I guess this is why they have managed to survive in this dangerous jungle alone. They might just be five years old, but still their strength is amazing. But still Takumi asks them to tell him about the monsters first. So the next monster they see they first tell Takumi about it before beating it down again. Takumi praises them for listening to him, which makes them very happy. They are just so cute. At sunset, the kids help him gather dry woods to cook dinner. Seeing cooked food, the kids were very at first, but after tasting a bit, they start smiling again. Takumi hopes that they will also like him, so they can get along well. At the town gate, the guards get suspicious seeing kids with him, since the dangerous forest from which they came is only for a ranked adventurers. So he says that he came from countryside to get some herbs and didn't go too deep into the forest. However, he still needs an ID which he does not yet have so the guard issues a temporary one for now. The guard really wanted to play a bit with the cute kids, but I guess he was too scary for them. In the town, the kids get scared seeing so many strangers all around them. Takumi also feels suspicion about the way things are happening in this world with him, like not running into any monster he cannot beat and finding these kids. So he talks with Sil about this, who once again begs for forgiveness, saying that he cannot reveal anything regarding that to Takumi. This world has five gods other than Sil, the wind god, the fire god, the water god, the earth god, and the creator god Marianala. It is very important that Takumi takes care of the kids as all of them are related to the gods somehow. The bed at the inn is very nice and soft which feels great. Jumping on it brings great joy to the kids. Next day Takumi wakes up to see the kids were watching him sleep. He wishes them good morning but then gets surprised when the kids also wish him back. This is the first time he has heard their voices. Takumi feels great happiness as the kids are opening up to him. To get permanent IDs for him and the kids he visits the nearby guild to register as adventurer. Lots of strangers are here as well so Takumi tells the kids that there is nothing to be afraid of. From level 3 Takumi has now leveled up to 11 dot adventurer ranks range from F, the newcomer rank up to S, the hero rank. There is also a rank above S called the SS rank but nobody at that level currently exists. Now Takumi needs a name for the party in which he and the kids belong. Since the kids are related to gods and are cute like angels he names the party White Wings. Even kids happily nod to this name showing their agreement. They start by taking a simple quest that involves gathering herbs. In the forest they spot a little slime. But there is nothing to fear as this forest only has E and F rank monsters. While Takumi looks for the herb the kids start messing with the slime a little. Once the slime runs away the kids help Takumi look for the herbs. Alan and Elena find a lot more herbs than even Takumi.so. He gives the earnings to the kids, but a muscly BOI with anger issues does not like seeing kids around here. His rowdy tone scares the kids who quickly flock towards Takumi. Even though fighting is prohibited in the guild, the muscly BOI takes Takumi by the collar which the kids do not like one bit and instantly attack the muscly BOI who goes flying towards the gate. Before Alan and Elena can do more damage, Takumi stops them. Thankfully, the guild lady considers this self-defense, so the kids won't need to be punished for this. Hearing all the trouble the night which gave Takumi and the kids temporary IDs at the city gate comes here. Seeing him, the kids start crying as they do not want to be separated from Takumi. So he calms them down by promising that he will never leave them. Knight also does not want Takumi to ever leave them. 
Hearing how Takumi found the kids, the guild lady talks about a band of slave traders heading to the city from the kingdom of Algo who got attacked on the street by monsters that came out of the forest of Gaia where Takumi found the kids. So there is a chance that these two kids were dumped out of the carriage as bait. Now seeing that the kids have grown really attached to Takumi, the knight appoints him their guardian. The guild then asks if Takumi has any materials from the forest of Gaia as she really loves stuff like that. Takumi shows her the red wolves which she instantly buys for quite a fortune. The night vault also periodically goes into the forest of Gaia to cull monsters as they don't want them multiplying unchecked and then spilling over into town. Since the forest is filled with many a ranked monsters not many are capable enough to go there, so the knight wants to take Takumi with him. Then a few weeks later all three have gotten used to their life here together. Alan and Elena are also no longer scared of unfamiliar people. Their party White Wings works on quests for two days, then takes a day off. During breaks the bread they eat here is pretty simple so Takumi misses his fancy dressed up breads and dessert breads from previous life. Hearing such praise about those Alan and Elena are now also interested in those. So Takumi decides to make them here. First they go to a nearby bakery to ask for a favor. Takumi wants them to make some bread for him using the special ingredients which he provides like jam and custard cream. The bakery guy gets confused as he has never made bread using these so Takumi shows them how it's done. Seeing the process the bakery guy gets too excited and instantly starts making more of those. Cute Alan and Elena also help. The whole process is just so much fun that they don't even realize how much time is passing. Once the bread gets baked, the bakery guy finds them to be just too delicious. Takumi asks the kids to eat slowly as it could get stuck in their throats. The bakery guy now also wants to sell these new kind of breads while paying Takumi off course but Takumi declines as he is just happy to be able to buy them here. Also it's not like he was the one who came up with this idea back in the previous world. Alan and Elena also found the bread with fillings to be very tasty and want to keep on eating more. Next day Takumi gets promoted to E rank. His level has also reached 13. Now he can even visit one of the 108 labyrinths in this world. Kids are also excited to go there. For now Takumi says that he just wants to check out the first couple of floors just to get a feel for it. He is saying this just so to not reveal his true power to others as it could lead to trouble. Alan and Elena are really good guides so Takumi is able to get by the labyrinth without ever getting lost. This one is filled with earth-type monsters like this ground mole. But the kids are just too powerful so they easily beat it up. Once beaten the monsters in Labyrinth just disappear while leaving loot in their place. Takumi tells the kids that some of their drops can be really valuable or rare. So Alan and Elena both quickly start looking for the drop of the ground mole which turns out to be a mole whisker. Takumi does not feel like this will be worth much. Then Takumi takes out a magical stove device with which they can have a hot meal no matter where they are. The kids have also learned to blow at their food to make it a bit cold so that their tongue does not get burnt. After a nice sleep, they get back to their business of taking down various monsters in this labyrinth. At the tenth floor, they find a treasure chest. What's inside might be really cool or it might be something dangerous. The kids want to open it now but Takumi stops them. Once he has made sure that it's not a trap, he allows them to open it. There are two potions in it. One is a stamina potion while the other one is a mana potion which restores magic. They are low-ranked items so there's not much in them. But then suddenly the kids notice a monster behind them. Alan and Elena instantly attack and send it flying away. Takumi praises them both for saving him. The monster left a wild ape hide behind. This could be somewhat rare. These kids certainly are truly amazing and if some bad guy would have found them then things could have gone real bad. Takumi feels like this is why the god wanted him to take care of them. However, he himself also does feel like he is using them. Then suddenly another monster shows up which is a clay snake. That one has venom so Takumi asks the kids to stay back which they readily agree with. Takumi uses his throw skill, then wind cutter to finish the monster off. But then more flying giant bees show up. The kids want to beat them so Takumi allows it after asking them to be careful of their stingers. The kids also use throw skill which surprises Takumi. Time passes but the kids have still not defeated the monsters. Takumi is ready to help them if they will be in trouble but stays back since obviously the kids are just playing a game of tag and having fun. While the kids are playing Takumi decides to sort the drops they have picked up so far. 
there is also a slime jelly. He wonders if he can use it for something since it feels really nice and cool. Once their playtime is over the kids instantly start taking down the bee monsters. This time the dropped item is honey. It is a pretty precious commodity in Ateldia. So Takumi decides to take out all the giant bees they see from now on. All this work makes them hungry so once again Takumi prepares a nice dish that he also seasons it using honey. The kids absolutely love these French toasts. More bees come but since the kids were eating Takumi decides to take these ones down himself with his air shot and wind cutter. But no matter how many Takumi takes down more keep on coming. They must be attracted to the scent of the honey. Even Alan and Elena love honey so they gladly take down more bee monsters. Takumi is also happy because this way they can get all the honey they want out of this. While gathering all the honey they can get soon they find themselves at the 15th floor. Here they come across the door for the room of final boss. The door closes once they go inside and a giant earthworm spawns in front of them as the final boss. Takumi understands that now they cannot get out until the boss is beaten. He asks the kids to stay back and uses wind cutter which the monster easily dodges and counterattacks. Takumi also manages to dodge but this monster is surprisingly fast for something so huge. It can also throw sandballs for attack which means it also knows magic. Definitely has that final boss energy. Takumi cuts the sandballs with air shot and then with wind arrow finishes the fight. It ended so quickly because the cheap powers Sil gave him are just that much more powerful. Just like how Takumi always praised the kids for doing great this time, the kids pat him for such a great battle. Such cute behavior just makes Takumi appreciate them even more. A secret passage opens which leads to a teleportation device. There is also a treasure chest containing fire bombs. The kids instantly start playing with them so Takumi takes the bombs away from them as they are dangerous. Using the teleportation device they get outside where the kids point towards a doggy which is actually a wolf. Even though it looked scary the way it acts is just like a pet dog. Alan and Elena also do not consider it a monster. Its status shows that it's definitely a monster and an S-ranked one at that. It also shows up as Takumi's contracted beast, but he has no idea about when he signed that contract. Seems like Sil is behind this as well. The beast does whatever Takumi asks like pawing, going down, sitting. Wolf is even anticipating a pat on the head. Even kids start imitating it. Now they have a great new fluffy and cute friend to play with. Takumi names it Jewel. Sadly, they cannot take Jewel in the city as everyone will get scared seeing a monster there. So for now, Jewel hides in Takumi's shadow. Talking with Sil reveals that it was the water god who sent Jewel for them as a way to say thank you. Sil also wanted to give them one, but I guess he won't be the first to do that anymore. Takumi does think that the kids does look like they are involved with the god of water. The water god household send more stuff for them which Sil gives them and they plan to send even more at a later time. Sil also threatens him with divine punishment if he does not expect the gifts given by God. After resting at the inn for the night, the next day they meet with the beast which Sil sends for them and it's a freaking tiger. And not only this S-rank heavenly tiger that can control wind and run through the air but also this thunderhawk, an A-rank monster that can control lightning and attack with great speed. Kids ask what would be their names so Takumi calls the tiger feet and the bird bolt. Kids love this name and instantly start using it while patting both the animals. Both animals also came with collars. Tiger and the wolf then shrink down to become really cute. This way they can pass as a dog and cat while walking around town. The kids also ask for collars but of course Takumi declines thinking off the look the people will give him if they saw something like that. Thankfully Water God has sent something other than collar which the kids can wear without raising eyebrows. It's a pendant that grants resistance to magic attacks. One of the rings in it also grants resistance to physical attacks, while another one will show Takumi wherever they are on a map. Kids also get magic bags. Getting all these amazing gifts has made the kids really happy. Back in town nobody raises any issue seeing the monsters in their cute shrunken forms. The Tio make Elena even cuter Takumi gets her some more stuff. However, Elena wants one of black color also so that it matches up with the black color of Takumi's hair. So Takumi gets her that as well. He also asks Alan if he wants anything from here but Alan declines and does not want girly stuff. The lady of the shop there asks for a favor by getting the kids to try some new clothes from her shop. The kids wear them and look really lovely in all of them. The lady has made all these clothes as she also does tailoring. The moment she saw these kids she just had to see how they looked in them. 
The kids take real liking to the animal-themed ones so Takumi buys them. Then at night Takumi thinks about what he should buy for Alan. The things he got as a kid don't really exist in this world, so he needs to give it a deep thought. Next day, Takumi decides to go on an expedition to cull monsters that could cause harm to people. For this, they will head back to the forest of Gaia, the same one where Takumi found the kids. They are going there with Vault and the Vice Captain Isaac Reisner. Vault was very pushy in taking Takumi with them. Takumi himself thinks that this will be a good experience for his party. But not everyone there is very sure about taking the kids with them too. However, Vault assures that the kids are strong even though they may be a bit too scared of Vault. Takumi apologizes and explains that the kids aren't used to being around so many people so this is just making them a little nervous. But while going towards the carriages, Takumi feels something susy. Even the kids notice it but when Vault asks if something is wrong, Takumi says nothing. While riding in the carriage, the kids finally calm down. Then, after reaching at the entrance of the forest vault, introduces other adventurers who would also be joining them. The Rudolph guy is even a ranked. In the jungle, kids point out the direction from which monsters are coming so Takumi immediately tells that information to Vault. But they are not seeing anything and even the adventurer with Rudolph is unable to detect anything with his skill. However, the kids use perception rather than detection to find out about the monsters. The detection guy's range is just too short as soon even he is able to detect the monsters. Everyone takes their fighting stance to prepare for the oncoming battle. But before the monster can show up even its aura scares Takumi. It's just one red wolf and it still scares Vault and his vice captain. But the kids just go ahead smiling to take it down as we see that Takumi was not scared of the monsters but the fact that he forgot to tell the kids to just lay low today and not show their true strength. The wolf jumps to attack but Alan sends it flying with just a tiny kick. Everyone is shocked but then Elena also kicks away another one. Kids are really happy smiling as they tell Takumi that they beat it but Takumi is in serious sad state as everyone who is watching all this is all freaked out. And since this is not a labyrinth the corpse of the red wolf does not disappear so Alan and Elena dragging it also adds to the freaky nature of all this. Takumi praises the kids but also asks them to let the adults fight the monsters this time while they take a break from fighting. Vault confronts Takumi and asks for an explanation immediately about what is going on. Takumi says that since they already took down a C-rank adventurer it's not like a C-rank monster will pose much of a challenge for them. However, in case of the adventurer Vault just thought the guy would have let his guard down since he was facing kids. Nobody would interpret it as any other way. Takumi then also reminds Vault of how he found the kids in this forest of Gaia itself. So staying safe in a forest like this for even a few days would only be possible with amazing strength. Godzill is also watching all this and feeling bad for putting Takumi through all this trouble. He is also praying that all of them will make it back safely even though he himself is God so maybe he is praying to himself what an egomaniac. Others are being very careful while walking in the forest but the kids are running all over the place with a smile almost as if they are here on a picnic or something. Takumi wonders why all the rush but then the kids show him the spirit grass which they need for completing a quest. Takumi is impressed that the kids remembered about their quest. However still Takumi asks them to not wander around on their own too much as Vault does not like this. But seeing the cute faces of disappointed kids even Vault cannot keep his tough stance up thus allowing them to wander around for a little bit more. The kids find another useful herb which is for itching medicine that even Vault needs. But due to Vault's carelessness in trying to pick up the herb barehanded, he had to hear at least a few hours long lecture from the vice captain since they can cause rashes. Seeing Vault depressed Takumi decides to use his ultimate weapon and whispers something to Alan and Elena. Then they both go and give the herbs collected to the vice captain allowing Vault to escape the lecture happily. Another job done well by the kids. But then more monsters arrive. Six orcs and one high orc. Rudolph wants to take the high orc so Takumi takes one of the orcs. Vault is not sure if Takumi can handle that but when the monsters attack Takumi goes ahead with his wind cutter and does exactly what he set out to do. The others also do their part but once it's over Vault asks about how Takumi insta-killed an orc all alone. However seeing the kids not happy with his behavior towards Takumi Vault backs down. But still he is not convinced that Takumi is F rank as 4 for him he is a fraud. Takumi corrects Vault here by revealing that he actually went up to rank E just now. But that hardly matters so Vault asks Rudolph to tell the guild master to raise Takumi's rank once he gets back to town. 
Then Vice Captain points out how odd it is to find a pack of monsters before they are even deep in the forest. The air in the forest seems quieter than usual too. Just to be on the safe side, they will need to investigate this. But the kids don't want no investigation as right now all they want is some snacks. So they take a little break. Takumi gives them the special bread while asking to chew it well but seeing this bread is another huge shock for Vault. This is the legendary bread of which only 20 pieces are sold per day and nobody knows which day they will be sold. Now Vault wants to know how was Takumi able to buy them. Takumi tells Vault the whole story about how he got these breads made for him personally. Vault also wants to eat some of that sweet sweet bread. But the kids decline. Sadly all the others can do is just stare and think about how tasty they would be. But seeing everyone like this Takumi decides to share just this once. Everyone starts enjoying the bread which worries Takumi as they also need to stay alert to their surroundings since this is not a picnic. The yummy bread gave them all a lot of energy so they start their investigation at once. Then they notice a red flare which means someone is signaling for help. They all start running for aid but Vault asks them to also save their strength as they might need to immediately battle after reaching there. Takumi decides to take the kids and go there using his immense wind speed like a roaring gale. They quickly reach the unit which is surrounded by a high-ranking variant of the Red Wolves, the Bloody Wolves. Some of the warriors are also hurt. Takumi takes out a water katana and with both Alan and Elena beats down all the Bloody Wolves. Till the time Vault reaches there all the wolves are already down on the ground. Vault never thought Takumi will turn out to be this much strong so he praises Takumi by patting him continuously but maybe he should stop soon as the kids are really locking him up as their next target. Vice Captain even encourages the kids to send Vault flying the next time he does something rude which they happily agree with. Takumi also starts laughing at all this but then suddenly he again feels someone hostile watching. Even the kids start feeling uneasy that he holds the kids to comfort them as there is obviously something nasty out there. At the campsite of the monster hunting expedition, the meals the knights prepared was pretty wild. He tried giving them a lot of tips to improve their cooking but everything just was too confusing for them as they are knights not cook. So Takumi hopes that the adventurers might know a few things about cooking and stuff but they also decline having any knowledge about the art of cooking amazing food. All they know how to do is laugh like crazy at stupid jokes. Now since Takumi had already been putting a fair amount of thought into what he will feed the kids, he just cannot let them eat some badly cooked food. So he starts cooking himself some really yummy stuff. Everyone loved it but due to that the next morning as well everyone looked at Takumi with hopeful eyes. So he ended up making breakfast too. Then again Takumi felt that sensation that someone is watching. He quickly asks the kids to come close to him. They are also running into too few monsters overall. Normally they see more of them the deeper they go into the forest. What the knights were talking about was concerning but Takumi was more preoccupied with the unpleasant looks he kept sensing. That is why he was so late at noticing a really big viper right above them. Everyone is shocked at this realization and before they can back out the monster attacks. Takumi holds up the kids to make sure they are safe. But the viper is just getting started. The kids were ready to fight it but Takumi stops them. Then suddenly the snake lunges at them. Takumi uses air cutter but the viper dodges it. Then Knight uses his earth needle magic to stop the viper. This is one nasty one so they all group together to fight it but still the adventurers fail to do any significant damage. Evil Viper's hide is pretty resistant to both physical and magic attacks. The way the Viper is causing destruction all around with its attacks one thing is clear that no one can survive a smack from that thing. Many of them got injured and are now getting help from healers. But the Viper ain't gonna let them heal so he goes to attack straight towards the wounded. Takumi uses Wind Cutter once again and this time he targeted the tree trunks which fell on the snake stopping it. Next Vault goes ahead with a fiery sword attack but it sadly does nothing. Takumi allows for the wounded to get more back while the adventurers use their powerful magic attacks on the viper. But after the dust settles the monster is not showing any harm on it. Then Alan and Elena just jump on the snake's back trying to attack it and now they are riding the snake without realizing where it's going to take them. Viper looks at the kids and makes them its target. Takumi takes out a dagger and puts it right through the viper's eye. This causes the snake some pain. But Takumi again feels the sensation. The kids also get distracted by it causing the viper to land a solid tail hit. Next the viper comes for Takumi. 
He wants to go help the kids, but right now he cannot do to the viper. Thankfully, the healer went towards them to take care of them. Seeing they are being cared for, Takumi asks Rudolph to buy him some time. He plans to use advanced wind magic. Something he has never used before, but right now he is certain that he can do it. All he needs is everyone to get clear once he gives the signal. Takumi starts preparing for the big attack while everyone else tries to keep the viper down. It takes quite a bit of time for Takumi to gather the large amount of magic he is going to need. But the moment it happens he gives the signal. Everyone falls back causing the snake to lunge again for another attack but this time he has to face with Takumi's wind edge. The viper takes it like a champ, causing a huge wind explosion all around. The viper at first thinks that this magic attack is nothing against his awesomeness but Takumi keeps firing it up until the viper cuts up into pieces due to the immense power of the wind. As the dust settles everyone can clearly see the viper can no longer attack them any longer. Takumi himself is a bit surprised at such devastating results. Then suddenly even the trees around them start falling down due to being cut by Takumi's wind. This was definitely not part of the plan. Evil Viper blood is a valuable material as long as Takumi can manage to pack some up before it all runs out. The kids come running towards Takumi to praise him for such a nice job. But for him, the most important thing is that the kids are okay. He thanks the healer Iris for taking care of them. She herself was surprised to see how resilient the kids are. They might be built tough, but Takumi still does not want to let something like that happen again. Then he feels that feeling again. Since the Viper is already taken down, Takumi decides to find out the source of this sensation. And he puts the guy causing these sensations on the ground. Everyone around gets surprised at such action of Takumi. Vault asks what is he doing. Takumi says that he should just ask the guy on the ground instead. Guy on ground Sages says he didn't do anything. Takumi is impressed that he can say that after he kept looking at Takumi with so much bloodlust. Even Rudolph noticed how Sages has been glaring at Takumi ever since they joined up, and then he says that he should not expect Takumi to overlook it when Sages directed such malice at him. Especially since Takumi is risking his life to protect them. The two kids have already gotten hurt due to his distractions. The kids also failed to notice the snake's attack due to this guy's bloodlust suddenly springing up out of the blue. Vault is really disappointed after seeing such behavior from Sages. But Sages still says that Takumi is making up nonsense. This makes Takumi mad and he shouts at him to cut this out. This makes Sages also made who then reveals that the reason for his malice is the fact that a commoner like him is earning Captain Vault's favor. This confuses Takumi, so the vice captain clears this up by revealing that this Sages guy is madly in love with Vault. And this is not that respect or admiration kind of love. It's straight up that kind of love. So the reason he picked a fight with Takumi was because of a complicated romance with Vault. Unfortunately Vault is interested in women but Sages counters that with the fact that Vault does not have any woman he loves at the moment. However Vault still declines the poor guy's love. Vice Captain then apologizes to Takumi and assures him that Sages will be punished for directing such malice at him. But the kids are happy so they don't hold any grudge. Takumi is also alright because the kids just got away with a few scratches. However he does warn that if that happens again then he won't be so lenient. Now that the malice matter is put to rest everyone wants to eat yummy food prepared by Takumi. Even though Takumi knows that the other knights are innocent but he just still cannot bring himself to happily cook for them again. However since the kids are ready to eat again with the old guys even after the danger one of them put them in. Takumi does make yummy food for all. He asks everyone to help out. Kids says they want to help with cracking eggs but they sadly ruin them. Takumi still asks them to remain calm saying that they will get good at this in no time. Besides even some grown up mess up such simple things just like them. Takumi has leveled up a lot. There are also some new skills added for his contracted beasts. Vault also comes to say sorry. Kids allow him to sit with them this time. This makes him really happy. Vault feels immense gratitude for the help they gave him. He also tells them that the expedition is officially over now. Since a lot of people were hurt, he has decided that it would be too risky to continue. They will leave the forest the next day. This also means that the quest he gave them is now complete. They can collect their reward from the guild once they get back in town. The kids had a lot of fun during this quest. Hearing this vault says that he will then again ask for their help. 
Kids are ready but Takumi wants to rest for a while at the guild Luna had been waiting just for them. She takes them all to meet with Johan, the guild master of the Adventurer's Guild of Shireen. Captain Loine Vault and Rudolf have asked the Guildmaster to not keep Takumi at his current rank. But after seeing him in person the Guildmaster doubts that he would be all that strong. However still due to recommendation from such talented people he does promote Takumi to rank A. Luna got really excited as it's quite an achievement to reach at such rank within such short time. But the Guildmaster asks her to calm down. However when it comes to the kid if people see them with such high ranks then people would get suspicious. But if they stay at rank E, then he won't be able to accept higher ranked quests. A party's rank is after all the average of its members' ranks. It would be a waste if someone at rank A could only do low ranked quests. So Takumi asks the kids what they want, but this confuses them as they have no idea about such complicated stuff. So Takumi asks their ranks to be raised by one rank to rank D. This would put their party rank at C. They can accept rank B quests too. Once everything is decided Luna takes care of all the paperwork. But while doing that she realized how Takumi cleared the Earth Labyrinth. Luna is especially surprised by how they went to the Labyrinth once, before even the expedition and conquered it in just those few days. That is a new record. But still Takumi wants to keep it a secret. Luna does not understand this at all as most would brag about something like that. But Takumi just don't want to attract too much attention and get Ellen and Alina into any more trouble. But Luna does not think that anyone would want to pick a fight with a guy who took down an evil viper. But then again she also understands that there are fools everywhere. Once the paperwork is done Luna wants to see the materials he got from the forest of Gaia. Rudolf told her about how Takumi took down so many rare and powerful monsters there. She also wants to see the stuff from the labyrinth as well. But Takumi cannot just take out such a large amount of stuff here so Luna takes him to the storehouse. Takumi also wants to keep some of the evil viper materials with them as well. Seeing Luna hogging all the items the kids helped collect they get really angry however Takumi asks them to keep calm. But the kids calm down once Luna thanks them for those items as well. Then finally Takumi gets some well-deserved rest. Next episode begins with the kids playing with the animal buddies and having fun. They both make weird faces in hopes of trying to communicate with the beasts. Takumi also finds this idea to be fun. Then Takumi teaches the kids how to count money and stuff. They learn how many small copper coins make big copper coins and also how many of those make up one silver and even gold coin. The kids enjoy learning so much that they keep asking Takumi to teach them more and more. So he also teaches them some basic math problems. For the practical he also decides to take them town to shopping. The shopkeepers also become happy seeing such cute kids. Now the kids are able to buy stuff on their own. Even the shopkeeper notes their amazing skills of counting money so well even though they are such young children. Next they go to a bookstore where the kids get really surprised after seeing so many books. Takumi is here to learn to use some water magic as he has acquired that skill. He also introduces the kids to the letters written in books. A lady at the library offers some reading practice textbooks and simple picture books after seeing the kids showing so much interest in learning. She is impressed by Takumi for teaching the kids so well. Hearing so much praise from the people in town has made Takumi kind of happy. This sort of reassures him that he has been interacting with Alan and Elena properly. The next day they go to the guild to accept their first quest in a while. It was a quest to find a missing cat. Takumi also brings out the beasts to help out in this one. Everyone starts calling out the cat's name hoping it will come to them hearing the call. Many different types of cats were found but none of them were Nina. Things seemed almost hopeless. The kids also got sad. Takumi even asks if they should just stop searching but the kids still want to keep on looking. Then they find a really fast cat which is the Mina they have been looking all over the place for. Takumi tells the kid that Mina will get scared if they approach too quickly. So he suggests going slowly. The cat keeps looking at the kids coming quietly towards it. As they get closer Mina also tries to hide. Alan shows it his necklace. The cat finds it interesting and comes out making kids extremely happy. It looked hungry so they give it some milk. The kids are really glad once the cat starts drinking the milk they gave it. Then they returned Mina to her owner, who was waiting at the guild. Now Takumi wants to head home but the kids want to search more. The guild does not have any more search quests but there is another kind of quest. 
though it's not exactly for children as it involves taking out some goblins who showed up at the next village over where they have been harming people and livestock. The kids have no idea what a goblin is, but they still go for IT.IT the village gate they are stopped and asked to reveal their motives. Hearing that Takumi is here to take care of the goblin problem, they allow entry. They all are on really high alert as the goblins have been attacking several times a day. The village chief is not very confident that Takumi can do this job, as he does not look very strong to so Takumi, shows his card which shocks the chief once he realizes Takumi is a rank. Goblins attack and Takumi goes straight to fight them. Everyone is running around due to goblins. Takumi uses air shot to take them out. More goblins come in and the kids also want to fight. Takumi allows it but also asks them to be careful. Beasts also want in on some action so Takumi allows them to fight as long as they are in these cute forms. They all mess the evil goblins up real bad with all kinds of powers. Then a little bigger goblin shows up. Takumi decides to take that one but before he can reach it the kids kick it to oblivion. Goblins are lying done everywhere and Takumi didn't get to do much. While talking to kids Takumi also hears someone else talk. It's the beast named Jewel who is now able to use telepathy after beating the goblins. Now he can talk with all of them. Jewel addresses him as master which Takumi does not like very much so the kids suggest Taku which is what they call Takumi. Then Feet also starts calling him Taku while the Hawk Bolt calls him Chief. Everyone learned telepathy it seems. Now they can be even better friends with each other. The kids trying to talk with the beasts earlier certainly worked. So Takumi praises them again which the kids like a lot. The beasts also want to be praised like that so Takumi pats them as well. Then suddenly they see smoke coming out. Bolt flies to see what's up. It seems like the goblins used fire now is time for Takumi to test out his water magic. He read the basics of magic last night, so he knows how to use ITSO without wasting any more time Takumi gathers water to create a water ball, but it does not help in putting out the fire. Taku tries once again and fails miserably again. It seems like he lacked magic, so this time he uses both of his hands to gather water. But both water balls fail, so he just asks Jewel to throw some water on it. Jowls does his water magic amazingly well. Sad Takumi decides to just read the basics of magic again when he gets home. Then the kids put their hands on Taku's head to comfort him in his sad time. The villagers bid them a happy farewell as now they are ridden of the goblin menace. After collecting the reward from guild they head home. Taku hopes the kids will also be tired of all the questing they did today but he is wrong as they are still ready for some picture book reading. In the book they read about oceans and fishes which makes the kids curious as they have not seen the ocean so next day. In order to show the kids more of the world Taku decides to leave the town. He plans to head south to the seaside town of Bailey. Vault is relieved to see that they will still be within kingdom as he fears a monster uprising could happen at any time leading to war and the last thing Vault would like is for the enemy side to end up having Takumi and the kids strength. Before leaving town they visited all the folks who had been there for them. The guild lady Luna becomes very sad and hopes that they will return as she is in love with all the rare materials that Takumi brings. At the bakery Taku loads up on a lot of that special bread to last them a while. They also buy some nice summer clothes from the tailor lady. She does not even take money for them and just gifts them as a goodbye present. Finally he visits the church to pray to Sil the god who put him in this world. Sil becomes happy to finally see Taku come visit him. But right when they were about to leave the city, a moron guy shows up saying that Alan and Elena are his merchandise. Now he wants them back. Seeing this evil man, the kids instantly remember him as the one who threw them out as bait to the monsters in that dangerous forest. The kids tighten their group around Taku as the last thing they would want is to leave him for this ugly moron. Takumi also feels the fear in the kids. 